What is the name of his son in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4? Proverbs 30, verse 4 says, Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his hands? Who has bound up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son, if you know? Agur describes God anthropomorphically with hands and a physical body who can go up and down from heaven so that we finites can understand that the high and lofty one can go up and down with his mighty presence while remaining omnipresent in continually filling the heavens and the earth. God's spirit can be Yahweh's spirit up in heaven and he can act and speak in heaven while simultaneously acting and speaking as Yahweh God down on the earth. So the scripture says, who has gone up to heaven and come down? God's spirit can come up and go down. God speaks anthropomorphically so that we finites can understand that just as humans can show up in their presence, so God can show up in a much more miraculous way while being in heaven and on earth at the same time. Agur then asks, what is his name and what is the name of his son, if you know? Another translation says, tell us if you know. Trinitarians allege that the words, what is the name of his son, proves that the son literally existed as a living son in heaven before his virgin conception on the earth. Yet when we look at other scriptures, we find that the name of the Son was not actually given to him as a living Son during the Old Testament time period. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, notice, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God's word speaks prophetically. Sometimes, as it says in Romans 4, 17, God calls the things which be not as though they already were. That's why the prophet Isaiah opens with the words, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, as if it happened already. Just like Revelation 13, 8 says, The Lamb which was slain from the foundation of the world. We know that the Lamb, Jesus Christ, wasn't literally slain from the foundation of the world, but in God's prophetic logos, in God's prophetic mind and planning, the Son was already the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, before the world was even created. So likewise, the Son was already born, in a sense. The Son was already given before the foundation of the world. After establishing this fact that God calls the things which be not as though they were, the child was already born, the son was already given the mind and planning of God, then the scripture goes on to say, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. So this future child born and son given will have the government upon his shoulder in the future. And his name shall be called, not like his name was already called this, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So the child born and son given, his name would be called, shall be called, in the prophetic future, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The words shall be called in Isaiah 9, 6 prove that the son was not actually called wonderful counsel of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, until a future point in time. The prophet Isaiah had predicted that the name of the child born and son given would be the same name as the mighty God and as of the everlasting Father. Since Yahweh is the divine name of the mighty God, the divine name of the everlasting Father, the name of Jesus in Hebrew is Yahshua, a contraction of Yahweh Hashua, Yahshua for short, which literally means Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. It's also interesting that the name Yahweh literally means the self-existent one. 
So you could translate the name of Jesus, meaning the self-existent one saves, and that is the same name as the mighty God and everlasting Father. Therefore, Jesus is the name of the mighty God and the name of the everlasting Father, yet that name was not actually given unto him as a son until his future conception and birth. God as God has always had the name Yahweh, but when God became a man in the virgin conception, that's when the name Yahweh saves was given unto the Son. Luke 135 informs us that the reason why the Son is called the Son is because of his virgin conception and birth. For the angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. For that reason, the Holy Child, which shall be born of you, shall be called the Son of God. Hence, the Son is called the Son of God because of the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven to supernaturally conceive the Christ child. There is no other scriptural reason why the Son is called the Son other than the New Testament reason given in Luke 135. For that reason, the child which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. There's only one reason why the Son is called the Son. It is because the Holy Spirit came down from heaven to supernaturally conceive the Christ child. God manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit who came down from heaven. 1 Timothy 3.16 Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 5 and 6 says, God says, I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh, our righteousness. All scholars know that study the Hebrew scriptures know that this is a messianic prophecy in which God would raise a righteous branch from King David. And a king shall reign in the prophetic future. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh, our righteousness. Not that he's always been called Yahweh, our righteousness, but he shall be called in the prophetic future, Yahweh, our righteousness. So Jeremiah 23, 5 says, a king shall reign. Rather than reigning as a living sun king up in heaven during the Old Testament time period, the prophet Jeremiah predicted by the Spirit that Jesus as a son would reign as a future sun king in the prophetic future. And then Jeremiah 23, verse 6 says, this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh, our righteousness. Since Jesus as a son would be called Yahweh in the prophetic future, he shall be called Yahweh, it is impossible for Jesus to have literally be called a Yahweh God the Son person throughout eternity past. Jesus as a son prayed in John 17, 11, Holy Father, Keep them through your name, the name which you have given me. The King James Version doesn't actually reflect the Greek text in John 17, 11. If you look at the New American Standard Version, you find that Jesus prayed, Holy Father, keep them through your name. What's the name of the Father? Yahweh. The name which you have given me. Therefore, Jesus was given the name of God the Father, Yahweh saves. Since Jesus was clearly given the Father's name at a specific point in time. You can't be eternally given a name. Holy Father, keep it through your name, the name which you have given me. If you compare that with other scriptures, which say he shall be called Yahweh, we know that Jesus was given the name of his Father at a specific point in time. The Son could not have literally possessed the name of Yahweh as his own name, until he was supernaturally conceived via his virgin beginning. That's when the Son was given the name above all names. Philippians 2.9 says, For this reason God highly exalted him, the man Christ Jesus, and gave him the name which is above every name. Since Jesus as a Son was given the name which is above every name, literally the name of Yahweh, for what other name is above or higher than any other name 
other than Yahweh God himself, the self-existent one. It is impossible for Jesus to have actually possessed the name of Yahweh as a living son person throughout eternity past because the son was given the father's name at a specific point in time. Hebrews 1.4 says, He has by inheritance obtained a better name than they, than the angels. How could Jesus have by inheritance obtained the name of Yahweh as his own name if he has always possessed the name of Yahweh as an alleged timeless eternal son throughout the timeless past? For a timeless God the Son person would be just as co-equal and just as co-eternal as God the Father. Therefore, he should have possessed the name of Yahweh as his own name throughout eternity past. But the scripture says that the Son by inheritance has obtained a better name than the angels. You can obtain a better name than the angels and always have that name. To obtain a name means you had to have it given to you at a specific point in time, rather than eternally possessing the name of Yahweh without a beginning. Wherefore, we can conclude that while the Son's name was already made known by God through his holy prophets during the Old Testament time period, God the Father did not actually give that name to his Son until the Son's future virgin conception. Therefore, the words, what is his name, and what is the name of his Son, if you know, in Proverbs 30, verse 4, does not speak of a living Son living up in heaven as an actual reigning Son King, because the prophets plainly declared that the Son shall reign as a king, in Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6, and a king shall reign in the prophetic future, and that the Son shall be called Yahweh. Not that he's always been called Yahweh as a living Son person, but he shall be called Yahweh when the Son actually became a living human being via his virgin conception and birth. Therefore, Jesus would reign as a king in the prophetic future, and he would be called Yahweh when he would be given the name, that name Yahweh, as his own name by inheritance. Hebrews 1 4. Matthew 1 18 through 23 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. The Greek text for by is from the Greek preposition ek, which literally means out of or out from the Holy Spirit. So more literally in the Greek text, it says, before they came together, she, Mary, was found to be with child ek out of or from from out of the Holy Spirit. So we here we see that Jesus was, according to Hebrews 1.3, character copied or reproduced from the hypostasis, substance of being of the Holy Spirit, according to Hebrews 1.3, and he was produced, reproduced, at, out of, or from out of the Holy Spirit. The substance of being of the Holy Spirit supernaturally produced a man-child as God manifest in the flesh who was made fully human in every way, just like all human brethren are made. Hebrews 2.17 And then the verse says, verse 19, And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is ek, out of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Literally in Hebrew, Yahweh saves. Yahshua, Yahweh saves. The self-existent one saves, for he will save his people from their sins. The angel said, His name shall be called Yahweh saves, the self the one saves, for he shall save his people from their sins. The name Jesus literally means Yahweh saves in Hebrew. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin will be with child and shall bear a son, 
and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. So we can see because the Holy Spirit came down from heaven and Jesus was copied or reproduced from the hypostasis substance of being or person of the Holy Spirit of God the Father himself, we know that he is called Emmanuel, God with us, because God's Holy Spirit came down from heaven. Jesus said in John 6, 38, I came down from heaven. How did Jesus come down from heaven? He came down from heaven as the divine spirit, the Holy Spirit of God the Father, who was reproduced to be the image of the invisible God as the image of the invisible Father, Colossians 1, 15. So we can see clearly that the name of the Son, according to Proverbs 3, verse 4, was foretold by the prophets, such as Isaiah 9, 6, that he would have the same name as the mighty God and everlasting Father, Yahweh, saves. But even though the name of the Son was prophetically spoken of as Yahweh, such as in Jeremiah 23, 5, and 6, the Son's name was not actually given unto him, until the virgin conceived the Christ child by or out of the Holy Spirit substance of being. Hebrews 1.3, Matthew 1.20. Therefore, God came down from heaven as the Holy Spirit of the Father, reproduced the man-child, and that's when the Son was given the name above every name. Jesus said in John 5.43, I have come in my Father's name. Jesus said in John 17, 11, Holy Father, keep them through your name, the name which you have given me. So when we're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus came in his Father's name. The name of Jesus means Yahweh saves. Therefore, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is just one name. There's only three manifestations of the one God. God is a Father, as a heavenly creator. He is the Son by coming as a man to redeem us from our sins. And he is the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit in action, manifesting himself. God was manifest in the flesh because the Holy Spirit came down from heaven. That's why 1 Timothy 3.16 says that not only was God manifest in the flesh, he was justified by the Spirit or justified in the Spirit. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit who came down from heaven. So we can see that the name of the Son in Proverbs 3.4 was prophesied, predicted by the Hebrew prophets, but it was not actually possessed by a so-called pre-incarnate God the Son. No, not at all. The Son's name was given to him, and his name was called Yahweh saves, or Yahweh our righteousness, Jeremiah 23, 6. For more videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us on our website at apostolicchristianfaith.com.